Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending and getting jiggy with it. Uh, we'd like to thank Manitowabi for making the Métis event part of the Manitowabi celebration. Um, we enjoy dancing here every year, as every Métis club would. We are, uh, we, there's two groups here, the Métis Club Traditional Dancers. The Métis Club Traditional Dancers have been around for the last 10 years, formed out of the Métis Club of Winnipeg. And they were given that name because they do a lot of uh, teaching out of the Métis Club on Monday nights and have volunteered their time for many years helping to share the culture of the Métis dance. Uh, there's also an event on every Friday where they have dances open to the public for anybody who want to come in and do some uh, Métis jigging, square dancing, any type of dancing that uh, involves a fiddle. And the Norman Chief Dancers uh, are another group that are dancing today. The Norman Chief Dancers, the name comes from Kevin Chief's late father who has passed away. And you'll find that a lot of dancers throughout Métis communities actually uh, name their groups after some, someone to, who has passed away, well respected. You'll find that in many communities. And I'd like to thank Clint Dudium from Richer, Manitoba, and the North End Band, Wally Randall, Donnie Randall, and Clint's son, Riley Dudium. So this morning, we're going to do an exhibition with Métis jigging and Métis square dancing. The Métis jig has been around since the early 1800s. Uh, it sort of stems from the powwow dancers years ago. The powwow dancing has been around for many, many years, and the Métis dancing was introduced when the uh, two cultures of the European, the Irish, the Scottish, and the French came overseas, and we had the Hudson Bay Company and the fur trappers. Uh, the, hus the men wouldn't go back to the uh, over back to Europe and would stay here in Canada and would take First Nation wives, and the Métis were basically generated from that sort of era. And it can, it can work the other way. It can be the First Nation husbands and the um, European wives as well. So that's how the Métis culture was kind of came about. And the dancing is no different. Our dancing is a mixture of mainly the powwow dancing, which is low stepping to the ground, and then we incorporate some of the traditional steps of the Irish and the Scottish and the French. The Irish being some of the, uh, the cross stepping that you'll see where they back step and they heel click. Where the Scottish have a very high kick in the air, you'll see that in the Métis dancing. And you'll see some of the step, uh, Canadian stepping, that Canadian French stepping, it's called, from the East Coast, Quebec and uh, the Maritimes. So we're going to get started today with uh, what we call is a first change, which is a slower tune, and we're going to mix it in with a faster change, which is called a second change. So we're going to do a first and second back to back. Uh, the Métis Club traditional dancers are, and that's going to be followed by the Norman Chief dancers who are going to do a second change right after we dance. So I'd like to thank Clint again. So we'd like the first change and the second change back to back. Thank you.
How about a big round of applause, everyone? Metis Club traditional dancers. Not only do they perform, but Dean and the team spent a lot of time traveling and teaching, as well as promoting uh, the culture, so we're very excited about that. Hey, listen, everyone, this is a good friend of ours. Her, her name is Mary Swain. Look, Mary, can you stand up? She's ready to go for the street party tonight as well, Swan Lake First Nation. So we said, I told her that Clint Dudium could play any fiddle tune, and I said our dance team could dance to any fiddle tune, what do you want to hear? What's your favorite fiddle tune? We can dance to anything. What best represents you and, and, your, and, and growing up? And she said, well, can you, play, can you play whiskey before breakfast? So we're not sure why, but we'll, we'll, do, we'll dance some, uh, some jigging to whiskey before breakfast for Mary Swain.
thank you, Clint, and the Norman Chief Dancers for that performance. Uh, we're still, we still got a bit of dancing to do, but uh, in between our second change and our breakdown, we'd like to get some crowd participation. So we'd like to do a quick waltz. If anybody would come up and like to dance with any of the dancers, we're going to all reach out to you and see who's interested in dancing. Thanks.
Thanks to all the participants that came up to dance. That was a waltz, which is a slower, slower dance that we like to do when we're dancing. Gives us a little breather instead of the high-paced stepping. If I could please ask that, if not, to walk by here, and if you have to, please step over the cords. Some of the stepping on the cords is causing shorts in them, and that's why the music's kind of cutting in and out. So earlier we did a, f the Macy Club traditional dancers did what's called a first and a second change. Usually the dance is done separately. We do a first change by itself, and then we do a second change. This time we wanted to showcase that the first change is a valid dance that people still do these days. You just don't see it as much because it's a little slower. So we wanted to showcase it, and then we jumped into a second change. And then when the Norman Sheep dancers got up to dance, they actually incorporated the jig at the end, which you could see we all jig when we do our square dancing. It's a one, two, three hop, one, two, three kick, one, two, three kick. But at the end, the two girls did what's called the Red River Jig. Now the Red River Jig is the most famous dance of the Métis. It is danced, the song is danced to a Red River Jig and the dance is named the Red River Jig. And it's very similar to the powwow or there's similarities in the powwow. When the powwow dancers dance, they dance to a drum beat, which starts out high and then goes low and repeats itself. Well, the Red River Jig is very similar in the sense that we dance to a high pitch for our basic step, the one, two, three hop, one, two, three hop, and then we change to a fancy step, which is fancy footwork with the low, with the low pitch. So the fiddle tune goes high pitch, low pitch, high pitch, low pitch, and repeats throughout the whole song. Our fancy steps are the basic step, fancy step, basic step, fancy step two, basic step, fancy step three, and it goes on and on. Generally, we dance three to five changes. A uh, good uh, average would be about four changes of the Red River Jig, very similar to your pushes. You usually you do four push-ups. Your four push-ups when you do the powwow dancing, and sometimes you hear the whistle, which continues to maybe a fifth or a sixth push-up. Well, we can do very similar things with the Red River Jig where we might dance the Red River Jig five or six changes. So I think the, uh, the Red River Jig is very similar to what the powwow dancers dance to, and that's uh, going back. So we b basically picked that up from the powwow dancers. So having said the explanation about the Red River Jig, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Métis fiddle with Clint here. The Métis fiddle is played a little different than the violin. Métis fiddles were brought in years ago by the Scottish, and the Métis people could not afford the fiddle, so they started to make their own because the fiddles from Scotland were too expensive. But the, the fiddle basically come from the Scottish and Irish uh, European countries, and we love to play it here. Usually it's played, it's accompanied by spoons or feet at home to keep time in the rhythm. If you ever went to a kitchen party, you would see somebody sitting there with their feet just going steady to keep rhythm. That sort of replaces the drum beat. So anyway, having said all that with the fiddle, we are now going to do a, what's called a breakdown, which is one of our uh, dances that we usually end with. And during our square dance, you'll see when we dance, there's a lot of different patterns. You might see lines, you might see diamonds, you might see stars, you might see snowflake. We do a lot of different patterns throughout dancing and we try to maintain our timing just like a powwow dancer. It's very, it's very important to dance to the beat during powwow and follow the beat to maintain that rhythm. Well, when we square dance, we do the same thing. You'll see that in both the Métis Club traditional dancers and the Norman Chief dancers. So we're gonna continue with uh, our breakdown followed by the Norman Chief breakdown. You guys ready?
Okay, so next we have uh, the Norman Cheek dancers coming up to do their breakdown. You'll notice that the similarities in our dances. We both love to perform. They do the same events as we do. There's a lot of jigging involved, the basic step. But with the basic jigging, we also have the incorporation of the Red River Jig. You'll notice that at the beginning of their dance and at the end. Once again, the Norman Chief Memorial Dancers.
everyone. How about a big round of applause for Clint Dudium in Winnipeg's North End Band. You can kind of see, they're also known as seaweed in some circles. We have Clint Dudium, he's playing with his son on guitar, Riley Dudium, everybody. And this is Wally Ranville, and he's playing with his son on drums, Donnie Ranville, everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna introduce our dancers. Our first couple is Daryl Saiz. He's dancing with his daughter, Kylie Saiz. The founder of our team, and he likes to be introduced by himself, everyone. He won't, he won't, he won't, he won't be introduced with anyone else. His name is Sonny Duck Bay Delron. He says he's the one that makes everybody smile, he says. Married for over 50 years, Ivan and Verna Spence, everyone. And we have Elaine Ranville dancing with her granddaughter, Kayla Lavalley. My name's Kevin Chief. I just want to take one quick second. Um, Dean Davis, you should know, uh, who helped organize this event with the great folks from Manitowabi. Dean not only manages and dances with his team, the Métis Club Traditional Dancers, he also helps us with our team, the Norman Chief Memorial Dancers. And on, on Monday nights, he teaches at the Métis Club so people can learn how, to, learn how to dance. And he also goes into schools and teaches, so we're really lucky. Can we give Dean Davis a big round of applause, everyone, before he comes up for helping us put this on today? He's known as Dancing Dean Davis. Thank you, Kevin, I really appreciate that. I'd like to uh, bring up our dancers to introduce them now. And thanks again to the Norman Chief for putting on a good show. And Clint Dudian for the wonderful tunes. Clint's probably gonna play a few more tunes right after I introduce our group. First, I'd like to introduce Joyce and Brian Beach, a married couple. They are, our, they are the cornerstones of our group. <laughs> Joyce is from Peguis and Brian's from Bogar, Manitoba. When I joined this group back in 2006, they had already been dancing with this group for five or six years. I'd like to thank Dave and Charmaine Rayner for coming out, couple number three, from both from Peguis, brother, brother and sister. Thank, th th thank them for driving out from Peguis this morning. We were short of dancers today and they uh, opted to come in and learn the routine first thing this morning. Next we have Hollow Water First Nation, Kelly Bushy in Duck Bay, Manitoba, Dennis Chartrand. And now our leader from Edmund Flow, Manitoba, Dean Davis, and from Lake Man Manitoba, Marilyn Davis, husband and wife. Okay, everybody, as you've heard, Clint Dudium is not only one of the best fiddle players in the country, but he also writes his own fiddle tunes. So we knew we were going to be performing here today at Manitowabi, so Dean uh, and myself, we approached Clint and we said, can you write a special fiddle tune specifically and only for Manitowabi? And he said, yes, I can do it. So this fiddle tune hasn't been heard anywhere. And one of the things that we wanted to do as I'm gonna get my good friend Lisa Meaches to come up. She's gonna join me on the dance floor. Lisa's been working so hard to promote culture, to promote the indigenous community, but more importantly, she's been, been helping build pride in our city and our province through the whole country. So I'm gonna get Lisa to come and dance with me. The dance floor is open. So the name of this fiddle tune, just so everybody knows, the name of the fiddle tune is called Three Powwow Dancers riding a white horse. All right, so if you're a powwow dancer, you gotta come up and dance with us because this tune was specifically written for you. And here we go, there we go, we're already starting. 
We'll get, uh, we'll get Marilyn to grab them. All right, so dance floor is open. Three powwow dancers riding a white horse. Here we go, everybody. One more. We'll end. We'll end on a fun one. Okay, everyone. There's a popular. Uh, there's a popular dance. I think it might have came from the Ukrainian culture, and we love Ukrainians. And so this. Uh, this is called the heel toe polka. So we got to do this heel toe polka. So if you know it, dance floor is open. Come and join us. But we're gonna do the heel toe polka Manitowabi style. So. We did steal this from the Ukrainians, but that's okay. They like that we dance this, but we're going to do the heel toe polka Manitowabi style coming up.
Test one, two. Well, that concludes the Métis element of Manitowabi. Once again, we'd like to thank Manitowabi for inviting us and making us part of this cultural celebration. And I guess you'll get on with your grand entry soon. If I can get the volunteers up for the dance floor with the trolleys. Thank you very much, Chantel and Lisa, for having us. One, two, one, two. One, two. Just in one, two, one, two. Good day, good day. Welcome to Championship Sunday here at Manitowabi 2018. Want to say thank you to our good friends, our relatives of the Metis Nation. A wonderful celebration, a wonderful display and performance here. We saw this morning great historical significance of the area here, of the Red River area here, ladies and gentlemen. A traditional place of many tribes, many nations that gathered for a millennium. I want to say thank you to uh, each and every one of you dancers that came out, to our musicians that came out and brought that good live spirit here on behalf of the Métis Nation. We're going to be standing by here for the um, final day of our celebration. we got one session coming your way, dancers and singers. It's Championship Sunday, and so you know what that means. It's game day. It's a full day of uh, championship song and dance, and so Right about half an hour time, 15 minutes time, about 15 minutes time, all of our premier drum groups, we're going to ask you to circle up and bring your drums in, and we're going to go with the uh, morning or this uh, final day of uh, drum roll call on behalf of our head singing judge. We want to get all of you uh, folks to come on in and get uh, set up here. Let's get the cooperation going. And of course, uh, in addition to our premier, premier international power celebration of song and dance, right now in downtown Winnipeg, people are starting to get ready for the Jets game. You know, last evening, they said the um, Las Vegas Knights, they stayed at the Delta Hotel, and we're very proud to have them around with us. We have one of our hometown, home province boys playing <coughs> on the Las Vegas Knights. He comes to us from Sioux Valley, Manitoba. His name is uh, a member of the White 